Hi everyone, my name is Julia Lowe. This summer, I worked on quantifying DNA damage in chromosome structure mutants. Meiosis is a specialized cell division that results in haploid sperm and eggs. Meiosis is characterized by one round of DNA replication followed by two rounds of cell division. C. elegans are a great model organism for studying meiosis and imaging due to their organization of the germline and transparent nature, allowing for me to see all the stages of meiosis in order. C. elegans also have a marker for DNA damage in early and late meiosis. I looked specifically at early meiosis and late meiosis because that is where DNA damage is induced and repaired. DNA is organized into chromatin on the chromosomes. Chromatin is tightly coiled DNA around histone proteins, all making up a nucleosome. There is heterochromatin and euchromatin. In heterochromatin, DNA is highly compacted and inaccessible to many other proteins, while euchromatin has a more open nature. There are different marks that define heterochromatin versus euchromatin. For example, H3K9 ME2 is a heterochromatic mark. This means that there were two methyl groups added to histone 3. The effects of chromatin states and loss of chromatin marks on DNA damage repair and induction are not currently understood. In the germline, we know that developing sperm and eggs purposefully induce DNA damage in early stages of meiosis, and this damage is typically repaired in late meiosis. So using a marker for DNA damage, I wanted to observe the changes in DNA damage and repair program at these stages of meiosis in a new context where the organization of DNA has been altered. This led me to my research question. How does, how does the loss of a specific heterochromatic mark, H3K9 ME2, affect the DNA repair system? To answer this question, I looked at a MET2 null mutant, which lacks the H3K9 ME2 mark, but still produces haploid sperm and eggs, allowing me to assess the lack of this mark's effect on DNA damage, repair, and induction. My lab mentor took pictures of germlines on a microscope. I then used Amaris to create surfaces out of the DNA. I then created spots out of the DNA damage in order to quantify them. This allowed me to determine how much DNA damage was associated with each nuclei during early and late meiosis. So what you're seeing in the central panel is immunofluorescence image, images showing DNA and DNA damage in oocyte nuclei. I looked at early meiosis because that is where DNA damage is induced and late meiosis because DNA damage is repaired there. The blue represents DNA and the yellow represents DNA damage. Qualitatively, my data shows that there is more DNA damage induced in the wild type than the MET2 mutant. In late meiosis, it seems to me that there is an equal amount of DNA damage in the MET2 and wild type worm. The graph to the right represents my data from 10 gonads, five wild type and five MET2. The white represents the MET2 mutant and the black represents the wild type. The green outline signifies early meiosis and the purple signifies late meiosis. The y-axis is the amount of DNA damage per nucleus. The MET2 mutant starts out with less average DNA damage per nucleus. This indicates to me that the presence of the H3K9 ME2 mark is important in some way for the induction of DNA damage. However, in late meiosis, where breaks are repaired, the MET2 mutant seems unaffected, indicating normal repair mechanisms in the absence of H3K9 ME2. You can see this on the right side of the graph, where the averages are the same at the end of meiosis. In conclusion, the MET2 mutant induces less DNA damage in early meiosis than the wild type worm. However, the MET2 and wild type have the same average DNA damage per nuclei in late meiosis. This all leads me to the conclusion that the repair system is unaffected by the lack of H3K9 ME2, but important for the induction of DNA damage. Some future directions for my research would be repeating the study with a higher sample size, creating surfaces out of the H3K9 ME2 marks, looking at DNA damage in other chromatin mutants, or looking at other chromatin marks like H3K9 ME3. Thank you so much for listening today and a special thank you to my mentor, Zach Bush and Diana Labuda for being the primary mentor for everyone in my lab, as well as my fellow Labuda lab members for the support. I would also like to thank the fire coordinators and other funding received for this project. Thank you so much.